In the field of medicine, there are different specialties that a Latina can consider, but there's also a field called physician's assistant. My guest is Ruth Aguilar. She's a physician's assistant, and I think you'll be inspired by her journey. And definitely, we need more Latinas in this field of medicine, and physician's assistant is a wonderful option. Thank you, Ruth Aguilar, for being my guest today. I'm so excited. I'm excited to get um, you know to everyone to get to know you and everything. So, how are you today? Doing great. Um, you know, it's life has ups and downs, but you just have to make the best out of it. So today, I'm just going to give you my best, and let's just do it. <laughs> I'm so thrilled to be with you today. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So let's start with a little bit about yourself, where you're from and where you're brought up and your education, where you got started. Well, so um, tomorrow's my birthday. So going back uh, 20 years, I, um, I, am, I am from Ecuador. I, am, I was uh, born and raised in Ecuador, my city uh, is Cuenca. And I came to the United States when I was 19. So uh, very young, very uh, looking forward, scared as everybody that comes to this uh, country. But I was happy to be finally with my mom and my dad and looking for a new, you know, life, you know, like doing better than what you were doing over there. So that's what I came. And I, in regards to my studies, I um, it took a little, it took two years for me to get started. I first studied English because I had no idea I had to speak English. And even though you in the school, you know, back home, oh, I, I don't know all the places, but for us, you just learn like basics, you know, but then you never speak. So here's where you actually do the learning and speaking. So I did my, va- uh, my bachelor's in biology. Then I went uh, to get my bachelor's in uh, physician assistant. And since then, I, um, I've been practicing medicine for the past almost 10 years, but yeah, 10 years was in October. So um, that's why. Where I did college was in New York City, uh, uh, York College, CUNY. Uh, one, one of the best experience of my life, hard, but so rewarding. So that's how life has taken me study-wise. That's where I am right now. That's great. Now, um... I understand you studied biology, right? In college. Oh, I love biology. How did you yeah. prepare? How, you love it? Okay. How did you prepare for that? And um, what advice would you give if there is a Latina kind of considering going into biology? Uh, it's funny because I didn't know I like it so much. I just know that uh, it, it's, it's funny because when I was back home, I. Uh, I follow the trend, like, oh, you should study computer science. And I actually did it over there when you're in, in high school, the last three years, you're uh, sort of like either you choose a, a field, either is like medicine, you go with biology and chemistry, which I didn't do because my school didn't have it. So I didn't want to change schools. So they had only like um, computer science, which I, I did. I took that. Um, I got to college the first year and I hated it. I was like, oh my God, this is horrible. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this anymore. And I was about to tell my dad (laughs) that I didn't want to do this anymore. I think that's being, looking back, I was like terrified to tell him like, you know, I'm sorry. Like I know I went to, I did this, I'm starting college and I hated it. Um, So thank God the, all the, you know, the the traveling to come to the U.S. happened, the the papers, the, uh, the green card got processed and everything. So that made it easy. <laughs> I didn't tell them. <laughs> I didn't tell him yet. I said, okay, we, I just have, we have to go. I'm like, okay. So when I came here and I was like, oh, so you're going to go back to do that? I'm like, no. <laughs> I'm like, no, no more. I said, I said, if I don't say it now, I'm probably never going to say it. So I said, no, I'm going to go into something different. And he said, like, what? I'm like, I don't know yet. And then when I study um, my first four electives in, in, in my community college, because I studied in a community college, it was biology, art, and writing, and something else that I forgot. I loved it. That was my first introduction to biology. And I wanted to know more. And I was finding myself reading the, the textbooks um, 
for biology and I wanted to know more about like how the cell works, how this works. I'm like, can you believe this? I'm like, I was blown away. Like I've never got that kind of exposure. And um, and I, I, I love that. So that was my, my first thing about going into the medical field. Like my first exposure to, to do that. That's great. That's wonderful. So from there, what was your next step? And how did you, what, where, where did you start um, originally when you started coming here to to, well, you're in New York, so I believe that what was your next transition from there to becoming a PA? Oh, okay. So it was a lot, like it's a little like long um, route, but I believe that now looking back, I believe that everything was like happened for a reason. So when I started my, I was studying biology and when I started my first job, I uh, wanted to also do it to learn English. So I started as, as a cashier in a local pharmacy. And because I speak Spanish, mm -hmm. I was quickly moved from the cashier part <laughs> to like the pharmacy department because they needed my help. So, and then I first thought that I wanted to be, I wanted to become a pharmacist. Um, so I went, I did my start, my basic, uh, my beginning studies in LaGuardia Community College. Then I moved, I did one year to, I went one year to Buffalo State University at, at SUNY. And there I did a one year, I didn't get into the program. And then at that moment, I really like kind of paused and I was like, okay, I'm not gonna be chasing different careers and different uh, universities or colleges or anything like that. And I, I was the first one to do um, to go to college and actually like finish in my family, and and so I was like I didn't have really nobody to like oh this is the path that you should take or like everything that I did I figured it out on my own and and like by asking questions afterwards, so I decided that I'm not gonna stay in the university because the purpose of or the intention of going there was to be a pharmacist since I didn't get accepted I was. Um, I asked myself if I want to really wait another year, try for other schools or anything like that. And I didn't, but like the physician assistant career was mentioned to me a few years ago, but I never, it never clicked and it never made sense. It never like, but at that moment when I was like speaking with a counselor and I said like, she asked me all these questions about like, but what is that you want to do? How do you see yourself? And that's when like, um, and then she's like, I said, I heard about like I, I heard about the medical field. It was, and then I said like, so what? So she gave me all the options there, and then that word, the, the physician assistant, it stood up at me again. So it was at that moment, it was the second time that I was um, exposed to that that profession. And then I went in all, the, mm -hmm. and I went on, and I read about it, and I see what they're doing, I see what the, the possibilities are, and then um, I saw myself doing it. And I said, okay, so I stopped feeling bad about not being in that college because <laughs> besides being so expensive, I was like, okay, I'm going to go back home and, uh, and, and do, and do, and do this. So, and then the, so I, then is when I like fully dive in into biology because I was like, I like biology. We need a bachelor's to be in, in this field. Okay. I can do that. And I loved it. <laughs> I, I like, it was easier for me to do biology at that point in New York. And then with that same with the same pattern, I did my prerequisites to be to be into the the, the PA program because you can, you have to be, uh, you have to be like you know selected. It's not like a, since it's a city college, city school, there's only thirty spots every year, and so, wow. so it's not it's not like oh I wanted to do this and I can just get in really easy. Um, mm -hmm. They look at everything academics and everything that you did. So the that year was like that that preparation time really put me into like very studious i was like trying to do everything that i could best so i can uh get into the pa program uh the, wow. the, the first time i was put on a waiting list that crushed me i was like no i you know i was sad crying but i felt different from when i was rejected from pharmacy school let's say I was like, no, I'm going to try next year. I'm going to do this because I really like it. And then I saw the difference of like, that wasn't really the, the, what I wanted to do. So I apply again. Mm -hmm. And then the next year I was, um, I was in. And uh, so that's, that's how I did it. And I love that. Yeah. My, I went I went through PA school. I made pretty, pretty nice, uh, pretty close friends. 
and we um, we did it. We graduated. We did everything, and then took the boards, passed it, and aced it. I was like, I've never studied so hard in my life <laughs> um, because it's like a full time job, and like you really have to dedicate yourself. And I gave it in. I have the full support of my parents, and um, my everybody around me, my boyfriend and my boyfriend at that time. So I, I made it. It it made it happen, and it was. It's a very emotional moment because everybody was like not only proud that I finished college, but also like I was part, like in the medical field because you know like back they they I, they idolize people that go right into law whatever that oh yeah so oh yeah you know, these are important great, fields that we need more Latinas in yeah. it's a it's a great it's a it's yeah it's um it was it was nice I had to experience that and I had the blessing to have my whole family my core family with me and it was just like uh, you know super special. So that that's my transition. That's how my I became a PA. That's wonderful. I love the um, wow your determination. The fact that you're you're right. Things happen for a reason, and you knew you wanted to be a pharmacist, but then things moved. But then when you never gave up, and that's what's the most important thing I think is that we 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 can't give up. We got to keep pursuing it, and everything is possible. Nothing is impossible as long as we put our you know, persistent to it. And that's what you showcase here as far as how you were persistent and you achieved it. And I can hear in your voice how much you love it. So, and that's really, that's very gratifying to you that you, what you do and that's what makes you happy every day. And that's one of the things that uh, I'm sure you're touching a lot of people's lives, including given the fact that, um, you know, the ratio for, a physician or a physician assistant to uh, the Latino patients is like one to 3000 and, you know, general is one to 300. So we are in such short supply. So I'm sure the Latino community, you know, patients that you see are very appreciative of you, you know, in your role. It's, um, it's, it's very rewarding. And I think that's why it keeps me um, grounded because like being there, like, from all the providers, um, there's only two providers that speak Spanish fully in Spanish. Like you're, you're, you have the background. I would say one because the other one mm -hmm. she didn't speak as a young. But then because of the practice, she kind of like had to bring it up. But um, mm -hmm. it is rewarding because you get the privilege to communicate, and I think communication is such a huge thing for everything you do. And when you're you're in pain, when you're frustrated, when you don't that you don't really have the the patients to like just be on a translator phone and i've had that experience with other people because my hospital the place that i work has people from other communities and other languages but at least the spanish one and like at least i know what they mean you know even the translators can't can recognize and that is based for different um geographic location like if you talk to my ecuadorian people they are, <laughs> my ecuadorian people are like i cannot believe how many years have you been here do you have a practice outside i'm like no i just work here i can't believe i never see you and um they're so grateful like grateful because um they know that the care that they received in our in our hospital but when they do that with a touch of spanish and it's just like mind-blowing to them too because they haven't gotten that. And it's it's very, very rewarding and privileged to get to hear their stories and um, and be part of that, you know, it's, it's, it's very nice. Yeah, it makes a, a big difference. And um, so I know that normally when you go into medical school or you, you kind of go through in, internship, I think uh, you're a resident. Uh, is that the same way with PA? Do you go through when you're going through um, mm -hmm. studying to be a PA? Do you have moments where you get a chance to go to a clinic or a job shadow or, or is that the same process? Oh, yeah, we, uh, we are like we are trained in the medical model. And what that means is like, okay, we do uh, have to have our bachelor's like the, the, um, the, the, pre-med school, pre-med go, right? They have to go, they have to go to four years of school. For us is like the four years of learning that the, the, the MDs get, uh, we get it in two years. 
is super intense. One year is fully didactic year. Uh, before, when I graduated, which, which was 10 years ago, uh, it was a bachelor master's. So which means you extend it for another, like maybe six months to a year, depending on you write a paper or whatever. So you can have the master like uh, degree. But when I did it, I uh, it was just a PA of a bachelor. So that's why I have two bachelors. But um, it's still, it's intense because you are in school from seven o'clock in the morning or eight o'clock in the morning until like five o'clock in the afternoon It's the whole day of lectures and then you go home and study some more and then you do that for the five days and then you do that for a full year and then the next year is full rotations and you do your rotations and the different settings that you can choose and that's the beauty about being a pa because um let's say a doctor and not to talk about about any doctors it's just like you know just like the the the, the the beauty of this career is that you can you can practice uh, in the scope of your of your physician. So, for example, I loved uh, at the beginning when I wanted to start medicine, I wanted to do inpatient medicine. So we will do rotations in the in the world and like uh, when the hospital patients are admitted in the hospital, take care of them. Uh, but then after six weeks, I would go to the emergency room. After that, I would go to OBGYN. I would get to experience. I've been in the ORs and surgery. I've been in the AD doing sutures. I've been in pediatrics. And then you get a sense of all the things that you can do. And then you're like, you're finding things that you're not liking. Like Pete is not my forte. I was like, I love these little kids, but I'm like, I can't see myself doing this. I am so like, they're so fragile and delicate. And I'm like, no, I'd rather deal with adults. That. So and then... I think to that through those uh, rotations, a full year of, of rotations, uh, where you get to really see what you like and what you don't like. So, so when you're ready to enter the workforce, you already kind of have an idea where are the jobs that you're going to be looking for, and, and that's that's amazing. So we that's the medical we do our our rotations with medical students, and we get trained in the same way as a as a MD or resident will do. And then they give us the, the, the privilege of do that because we are training that model. That's great. That's wonderful. Now, um, I kind of have an idea what the difference is between a physician's assistant and a physician. Um, but could you explain that so we kind of understand the difference sure. on that? Sure. The physicians are like a doctors, right? So they, they have their own education. They go to medical school and the degree they get is uh, an MD. They also have to pass the, the board certification. And then depending on like where they want to go, they can just specialize and further. But that, you know, all that studying takes anywhere from 11 to 15 years. And that's just, uh, you know, depending what else do you want to do, right? You go four years and and then they still get all the, the rotations and all that. The residency is three years. So all that adds up, and that's what they become an MD. So that's why it's a long it's an investment of, of time. You know, people, like I know people that I have got the pleasure to meet that they, they knew they wanted to do this. As soon as they finished college, I mean high school, they went into the into that track. And it's fine. They loved it. Uh, for me, it the PA, it's a little shorter. Like we did it, I, I did it in uh, six, uh, six, six years because it takes four years of having a bachelor's plus you do the two right. um, right. the two years that you do in the, in the program itself and then you graduate. Right. So the, now is I think, seven because now you do the master's. Um, so it's anywhere from seven. So from seven to 11 or seven to 15 years, depending on your specialty, that's a, a big difference. And I was not already like out of high school. I had some years that I was like, you know, I like this. Um, I don't want to go through the through the medical um, to become a doctor track because it didn't. I didn't know that I don't wanted it, or like I just felt like what I was going to be doing, I can do that being a PA. I was, and then I also thought like the, you know, like how versatile can we be? Like, let's say now I'm doing primary care. I don't want to do this anymore. I want to switch. I want to do intensive care. Intensive care. I want to do PEDS. I can train and then do that and then um, work with a doctor that's willing to train me. And then I will um, I will get my expertise on that area and I can switch versus a doctor. You can't do that. You, have, you want to be a pediatrician, you have to go back and do the three years of residency and then you can do that. 
Right. So um, it's a difference that a full doctor, let's say, can specialize, has to specialize in an area, either family medicine or orthopedic, but they can do surgery and perform those things, right? I mean, can you perform surgery or are you more of, uh, of like a family doctor? So we also in the OR, we also uh, have, we also, have, we are PAs in the OR that I can even do robotic. I my one of my best friends, she is, um, she does the robotic surgeries. She was trained by, for that. And she's the one that, um, because we don't leave when, you know, I, I always go back to this because when PAs do that, they come and stay. We like what we do. We love what we do. And then the residents keep coming, keep rotating, and then they leave. So she is the one that actually uh, trains with the um, trains with the residents and so she teaches them how to do that because like she does that all the time um so we do have privileges of closing and depending how you your your surgeon feels with you comfortable or not but that you know we have that ability because we are with the scope of practice of that, that physician of that surgeon and we can do that Wow. So that's like to say that we can run the whole operation, no, that, that, that's incorrect. We, uh, you know, the, the whole surgery. You're, sorry. you're like what we I say in the system. We, can, uh, we, are, we are in a team, so we are part of the team. Yeah, we, sure. can, uh, we can do that. We can close and we can do the other part of the surgeries. Yeah. That's great. Help assist us. Yeah, it's great. It's mm -hmm. wonderful. I really, that, that's a fantastic field. I think, um, that's a great option that came up. I don't think it's very long ago. I mean, I'm not sure how long it came up that all of a sudden there was physician's assistance, but a lot of even nurses decided to get into that. So I think it's great, great opportunity. And so, so exciting that you're there. Um, so if you went back in time to when you were 18, uh, whether you can choose, whether in high school um, or wherever you were at that point, what kind of advice would you give yourself having gone through all this? Oh, that's something that I've been thinking because, uh, like I said, tomorrow is my birthday. Oh, um, happy birthday, by the I way. Was just doing some... <laughs> happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> ah, thank you. Thank you. It was just like, I don't know if you know these. Um, that's uh, maybe a long answer for this question, but like the, um, the song that Ricardo Arjona, uh -huh. like La Señora de las Cuatro Décadas. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that song, I remember it, like, for the longest. And I used to sing it very nice and everything. And I saw that song so far away. Like, really, I don't know what I was thinking. Like, oh, I'm never going to get to that. So tomorrow I'm going to turn 40. And I've been doing a lot of thinking. And, you know, when you ask me, like, what would you do when I was 18? The only thing that I think um, I would do, like, if I had the insights that I have now, which nobody does, right? So it's just like, you should listen when somebody tells you something that you have to go and do it yourself. And it will be like, um, have some courage to like, uh, go for the things that you wanted to do. Because I, I, like I told you, I was so scared of telling my dad that I didn't want to do computer science anymore because I was feeling bad that he's going to feel bad that I am like not doing the things that I said I was going to do. But at that now, retrospectively, I feel like at 18, you're so such a kid. Like I look myself now and I still think don't know what to do sometimes for certain things. And you're like, it's a constant learning, a constant evolution and growth. So I think like, like what's the worst thing that can happen? You know, just like speak up and tell you truth. And, and that's what I, I would do. Like, I wouldn't be like afraid, like of talk because I've always, always, I had that growing up that I've always had to be careful how other people might feel. And then you put yourself limits and you're what you can achieve. And um, coming here to the United States, obviously, like, make my brain, like, go boom. Like, this is possible. You can do it. You can't, you can't, um, this is an opportunity for you to do great things. So that's where I am right now. And I think I'm just getting started with the things that I want to do, accomplish, and be. So that's maybe a long answer, but that's where I am right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's really good advice because I think a lot of us feel that way. We don't want to let our, our parents down. It's a, 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 it's a culture thing, I think, you know, when they, they expire, yes. they go to college and certain thing and not give up. But sometimes you have to tell them it's not for me, you know, and, and, uh, and you have to, they have to accept it. You know, it's, we got to get a little more stronger and because it's really your path and you really, it's something you got to be passionate about doing and, 
and uh, following that. Because if you go in the wrong direction, then you won't be happy and that doesn't work out. So I'm glad you made the right decision. It sounds wonderful. So <laughs> last question I have, which is, um, what is your favorite quote? I'm sure you have a lot of them. You can give me more, more than one if you'd like, but <laughs> what is one of your favorite ones? Um, like, I mean, like I told you, like, I love, I like a lot of quotes, but like lately I've been um, very uh, centered on faith and because there's moments that I have got, been tested by faith. And so like I have these, um, these little notes, so I read it every day. So I'm going to read it because when that's what I do when I feel down, I just have to go back and find the strength, right? So it says, the Lord is my strength and shield. Uh, my heart trusts in him and helps me. That's Psalm 28. And so when I read that, it really stood up to me. And then like I was like, oh, I want to see this every day. So I put it in there. Um, and that's what I do with that quote that resonates or like something like that. It, it makes it's me beautiful. get back to be grounded and, and just keep and going. I love that because that is true. We do, you know, we do need our faith. And, and lots of times it's uh challenge. We'll always have challenges in our life. So we have that. And what you read is definitely uh, fitting because we, you know, it never ends. But with your faith and always reading something like that really gives you kind of a, a perspective to move forward. So thank you for sharing that. It's awesome. Well, Ruth, I really appreciate uh, yeah. your time. I think this is great. Uh, I, I love everything that to uh, get to know you. And I know that our listeners, which are, you know, Latinas considering where to go and they're younger, will have an opportunity to learn so much about your journey and perhaps be the future PAs. Uh, that we need. So, oh, yes. so that would be wonderful. So thank you. Thank you for your time and happy birthday. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. If you ask me what did I plan for my birthday, I would tell you, oh, I wanted to do something else, but not being stuck at home with my family. Oh, with COVID. Yeah. But I know. Life is life. <laughs> <laughs> I know. COVID life is, is life and you just have to. Yeah, I COVID know. COVID is another topic of its own so let's just leave it at that and lift our spirits up <laughs> yeah that's right you know so kind of plan for next year <laughs> or do yeah. whatever you you know make it yeah. a relaxing day or, I know. you know try and exactly <laughs> you pamper yourself that's a nice way of doing it so so thank you that's for sure <laughs> yeah thank you for no, a pleasure thank you and an honor thank you thank you for thinking of me and like inviting oh, me for this space a pleasure. and i hope they can help and benefit from the conversation because I loved it. Thank you so oh, much. I did too. So thank you. All right. So this concludes our episode and with S Latina. So I hope that you'll join us for future ones. Thank you.